from the magic of Motown to some real homegrown magic, filled with Karaka of Herbs. Kia ora. Kia ora, brother. Welcome to the Music Weekend. Thank you. Now, Sensitive to a Smile is Herb's most successful album to date. But the launch for the album, you didn't do it at some glitzy reception here in Auckland. You did it in Ruatoria. Whose idea was that? It was one of my ideas, actually, uh, Simon. But uh, we chose it for its remoteness and uh, opportunity to share something like this with people uh, in a remote area. Everyone have a, have a good time? I certainly did, a whole weekend. Oh, great yeah. stuff. Now, you're doing a lot of ballads these days in your music. Is that a deliberate move on your part to make it less political? Um, we're moving into an area where uh, our records are getting distributed around the world now. And, uh, we feel that we've got to start changing our ideas of the writings of New Zealand to adapt to uh, more worldwide. mainstream. Mainstream, yes. yes. So, what's up now for Herbs? We're looking for a friend of ours who's coming to New Zealand shortly, um, Joe Walsh. A friend, Joe Walsh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend, and uh, he's coming down to produce our next album. And uh, we're off to a tour very shortly for Australia and uh, cover areas where our records are getting released. Some really exciting stuff coming up. Certainly, yes. Well, lots of luck for that, Bill. With. Thanks very much for coming on the Music Weekend. Thank you, Simon. So, right now, it's Herbs and the power of music. East Coast, Ruatoria, just up from Gisborne. I know nobody goes there, it's cut off ever since they put that road through. They've been having lots of hassles, don't you read the newspapers? I know it may sound silly, but the band want to launch it down there, and that's what we're going to do. We've been down to see the people. Accommodation, we'll stay on the Marae. They've been doing that for hundreds of years. Yeah, we probably will get a problem with the media, but at least we'll get the real people down there. Yeah, your name is on the back of the album. The record launch is all the same. I mean, everybody's doing it in LA. We're going to do it in Ruatoria. Well, it was Dilworth's idea, uh, first of all, and uh, it's part and parcel of us uh, being Maori. Uh, I mean, uh, being Maori is like being in a river, and you can't uh, participate in it unless you're in there. 
Band's going to take their family down there. There's about 400 of us going. Part of being Maori is the ability to give. Um, so that was uh, us uh, going down there, uh, giving the services that we had. Uh, and at the end of the day, we thought there may, uh, you know, a good chance of some social harmony coming out of that. Although we didn't know it in the, in the beginning stages. to give something back to uh, the community. We wanted to share the experience of launching an album in a community that had never been through that sort of thing before. Ruatoria was perfect. It was uh, a deeply spiritual Maori community, troubled and divided community, and a music that in conflict. And we thought that there was a chance that the power of the music could work as a unifying factor. Normally these things are done in, uh, in nightclubs, uh, very upmarket, all the media's there, etc. And uh, it's great for, for uh, marketing of the band, but uh, Dilworth was the one that came up and uh, said, why don't we include uh, the people of Ruatoria? And the whole thing changed and it became a people thing. It was, the emphasis wasn't on selling the album, it was uh, joining in with these people down there. <laughs>
Even my children were scared to come down there, you know, they don't really want to come down. The youngest son in particular from hearing things from the playground. He was the most frightened of all of us, and uh, I didn't really have any doubts about it. I, I did expect to feel some tension when we got there. Once we settled in at the Marae and that, it was just like being anywhere else. We're still grateful and thankful to the people of Rotorua for letting us perform there. And um, I hope good harmony has come amongst the people of Rotorua and also for the people of New Zealand. A lot of people look at, look at music to be in the international language more than anything else. But it doesn't matter what, what race you are, people still identify with music. This particular album sensitive to the smile because it uh, it was featuring the, the innocence in other areas of the world that we don't get to see. Rural Toria seemed to be the place and as well it it meant a lot to a lot of individuals as well. undertaken to, to show New Zealanders the power of sharing the oneness with our land and the oneness of the Pacific. Because we feel that the Pacific is our last bastion for everyone throughout the Pacific region. The world situation, people not getting on in their own lives, and people that are so used to highlighting situations instead of coming down and sharing them. And we have taken great care with Ruatoria. Well, the band's uh, always had a very strong social conscience. I mean, I've seen the band as, as being the voice of the people, the, the, the frustrations coming up from the street uh, of which the band lives in. Uh, and, and it's then transmitted into words and sung about. Um, the other thing, it's, it's, it's a way of reconnecting with, uh, with Maoridom. It's a way of reconnecting with our past uh, to keep us balanced, feet on the ground. Having us down here on behalf of my brothers here, I'd like to pre present the people of Rutoria. the album which usually is gold or platinum that we made something special for you people and it says herb sensitive to a smile e koha motu hake na herb ki nga uri o te papa tipu o ue pohatu nga tiparau thank you Okay, what we'd like to do right now, a brand new single from our brand new album. And this is all about children and elders and people in general. Yes. It's called Sensitive to a Smile. Dedicated to our new people here. Open up. 
Just so proud to have my family on that marae in Rotorua, and that is the first time I've actually stayed on the marae, you know. and um, it's actually left me feeling really good, really good about my own self, about my own life, about my brothers here, the whole lot, and I think everybody else feels the same way because we helped out something, we've brought out something down there that's happened that a lot of people are getting blamed for, you know. We want our people of Uratoria to live in harmony, in peace, in tranquility like we did in the old days. No more war, no more fighting. All we want is peace here. And if they come, they will be rejoicing. Sorry, we couldn't come and see you last night with the weather.
too bad was playing with the two hot ones. <laughs> Thank you, brother. It's more of a success, actually. I mean, the, the effect that I had personally was a spiritual effect. I felt that I grew in those times. Um, I'd had this feeling for a while that uh, I especially needed to look back in the uh, past to get some direction for the future. And before, prior to going to Ruatoria, uh, uh, the media hype about the place was untrue. When we, f when we arrived down there, we found that there was a very strong community. Uh, I can remember the uh, smiling faces on the kids and the uh, electric eyes. That they were alive. Uh, I experienced Araha. I experienced people living together. There was a timelessness about... Uh, about being down there. It could have been 1863. The, the Rural Toria experience has brought back to me as an individual that, uh, that the people in that particular situation in the country don't move as fast and don't talk as fast, but when you can wind down to their level, it's it's uh, it's a feeling that every human being needs to feel when they when they realise that they're moving too fast. I hope good harmony has come amongst the people of Rotorua and also for the people of New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs>